Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, we're finally going to be talking about the newest collaboration album between Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib called Bandana. You know, I'm genuinely curious how many people remember the narrative surrounding Freddie Gibbs five years ago. Because while he was respected by those in the know, you could make the argument that his profile had suffered, been marginalized by the split with Jeezy, and his debut album, ESGN, not really hitting as strongly as it should after a string of pretty well-received mixtapes. And while there had been some build-up for his collaboration with Mad Lib through a couple of scattered singles that had hype, there was also considerable skepticism because Mad Lib does not make easy beats to ride, and his sample-heavy, claustrophobic, and occasionally lo-fi production did not match anything close to the trap for which Freddie Gibbs was known. And well, hindsight's 2020, in the wake of Pinata being one of the best rap albums of the decade, it's been easy to say that Freddie Gibbs has just been criminally underrated. I also think it's important to highlight how much he has stepped up his skills as a rapper in the past five years. Not only has his lyricism improved by leaps and bounds, but so has his flow and his structure and his command of melody. And while his past couple projects I've been kind of lukewarm to positive on, the one I didn't review was Fetty, and while I was okay with it, it's more because I'm not really a big fan of currency, but the hype for his return for working with Madlib was considerable, especially considering the guest talent he was recruiting along the way. I mean, Pusha T was obvious. They play in the same lane. The combination was bound to kick ass. I'm surprised they hadn't worked together before, but getting Killer Mike and Anderson Pac, Most Def, aka Yasin Bey, and Black Thought too. As I had to say in my mid-year review, the fact that I had not covered this album was a considerable asterisk I had to add to my list, just because I hadn't heard enough of it in time to process it and think it over. But now I had that time. The moment's here. What did Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib, what did they deliver on Bandana? You know, I genuinely wish I could come in here and say that Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib really earned that asterisk on my mid-year list as one of the best albums of 2019. Hell, I think to a lot of audiences, he probably already has, especially given the critical acclaim he has received within hip-hop circles. And yet, even some of that praise has been receiving some qualifications, most notably in comparison to Pinata. And that's what makes talking about Bandana so tough for me, and why I started off this review describing the arc that led to Pinata's release. Because no, Bandana is not better than Pinata, but would only really exist in this form because of it. More than that, Bandana constantly feels like it's in Pinata's shadow to some extent, in production and in the content that sound more like they're trying to streamline and capture more Freddie Gibbs more straightforward and current appeal now than finding the deeper layers of texture, focus, and insight that made the best moments of Pinata so expansive and compelling. And while I really want to call this a great album, well, we'll get to it. And look, given the only reason that this album exists is because of how much hype and success came from Pinata, the comparisons, they're inevitable. Not entirely fair, but they're inevitable, they come up. But I do want to highlight something that put that project above the coke dealer gangster rap that Freddie Gibbs had built his career on maturity. Now that's not saying that Freddie Gibbs would compromise his sense of humor or his flair, but that he was willing to see not just from his perspective, but from the drug fiends that he sold to, the family around him that were long-suffering, or even try to give more humanity to the women in his life, both his current partner or his side chicks. It wasn't as ruthlessly dark or nihilistic as Pusha T's brand of cocaine rap, but just as weighty in assessing the bloodstained consequences, and the textured, soulful palette of the production on Pinata only intensified that weight. And while Freddie Gibbs is only further developed as an MC with more flexible and melodic flows complementing his really thick and melodious baritone, I'll admit my biggest draw to Bandana would be seeing where he would take that more complex flavor while reminiscing on the messy balance between dealing, gang violence, and his flourishing music career. And you know what? To Freddie Gibbs' credit, he is aiming higher. Where there is more of a laid-back, thoughtful, introspective vibe to Pinata, there's absolutely absolutely a greater sense of urgency on Bandana, and the political subtext that ran through the margins of previous albums is moved into the outright text here. And while of course you'll get the obvious parallels
both between the current administration and the Reagan years. It is kind of interesting just how much Freddie Gibbs highlights how the Obama administration's gains they were so easily rolled back or fractured or incomplete, highlighting just how much the system has failed them in the long term. More than that, while he references methods of how black men have found success in America, and then adding the qualifier how there should be more ways besides dealing, basketball, and rapping, he also finds himself more interested in how they've buckled those systems in order to assert their power. It's not surprising that we get references to Allen Iverson's legendary we're talking about practice monologue on the song called Practice. Now, of course, the loaded response to this is how in the ream of crimes that Freddie Gibbs professes to commit across his project, it would put him on the wrong side of the law, drug war or not. And while he's willing to call out his own hypocrisy and the failures of his crew and friends to keep him on a better path, I like that level of self-awareness. Justified institutional distrust, it's not a good enough excuse to put anti-vax bars on Palm Olive with Pusha T and Kill a Mike. The latter is only given a hook, real blown opportunity there and yes Pusha T's verse it's great and showing how Obama did open those doors to him recognize the power and cultural weight he had in hip-hop in fact across the board I'd argue the guest performances are really damn solid from the darker drug violence from Anderson Pac on Giannis that's one of the best songs here to education with Yasin Bey and Black Thought showing both the history and present-day systemic oppression that will then lead to Freddie Gibbs highlighting how much he just is a product of that world but there has been been a notable shift in the slant and worldview from Freddie Gibbs on this project that does deserve to be highlighted. And this is where it's worth mentioning that Freddie Gibbs did join the Nation of Islam in 2017. And the newfound religion does touch the content in a few notable ways. From the more practical scene of where he still served pork in prison and has to fast to put it aside, to the metaphysical, where he's all the more aware of how damned he is by his vices and actions, and that deep-seated regret persists through some of the most impacting moments on on the album and really it's some of the best moments but the nation of islam has been tied to the anti-vax movement in recent months and it's not the first point of weird moral contradictions that saturate this project. On Cataracts, Freddie Gibbs says he doesn't really care about people or rappers cross-dressing or experimenting with their sexuality. It's more pragmatic and who am I to judge I'm damned anyway sort of lame. But then he'll diss 21 Savage for doing the slut walk with Amber Rose on education. Or laugh at cheap gay jokes made at Jeezy's expense on Crime Pays. And again, Freddie Gibbs, he's a smart man. I give him a lot of credit. And he clearly cares about his dog. Daughter, she's probably the most strong moral weight for him on this album. Beyond the self-awareness, he clearly does have, especially on the final third. So, while I am more forgiving of the moral complexity and understand the roots of where these contradictions might be, it doesn't mean I have to give him a pass on them, especially when I have the lingering impression that a few of these songs, they weren't really afforded the greater consideration to iron out some of those moments. And again, I'm not giving a pass to someone who's pushing any vax nonsense. And you know what? That's not just me saying that. That can come from Freddie Gibbs himself, where at the end of tracks he'll live ad-libs and quips in about the recording. Providing Madlib doesn't juxtapose a sample in, that seems to instead reinforce his own drilling his lane rather than challenging it or subverting it. And that did get a little bit annoying. And you know, it's hard not to feel like some of the same slapdash approach also is heard in some of the production. The transitions within songs, they're harsher, they're sharper. The sample fidelity varies even more widely between tracks. And while I am a huge fan of the soul palette that Madlib creates. He even tries his hand at some sharper, more spare track groups, like off the brittle clicking percussion on situations, or the first section of Half May and Half Cocaine before the song warps into a more nightmarish breakdown full of contorted tones, louded cymbals, and Freddie Gibbs is trapped within all of it, highlighting the shift between the dealer flexing and the darker nightmare of the real drug trade. Hell, part of that instrumental almost sounds like it came off Atrocity Exhibition. And make no mistake, this album can get pretty damn dark in a Abrasive. Appropriately so. The spooling tape and pile up of vocal samples on the claustrophobic massage seats, the scuzzy warps of flat tummy tea that still leaves spiking echoes after the beat switches to something more gentle, to the haunted keys and the curdling bass beneath Giannis. And while Madlib is a great enough producer to balance out his mixes when they do go a little more lo-fi, I do question why education piled on the warp and compression and the most muddy vocal mixing on the entire album. On a song with Yasin Bey, a aka most deaf and black thought. But I'll also freely admit that I'm drawn most to the crackling soul side of Madlib the most, and there's lots of it here, from the gentle fluttering keys and the warped compression of crime pays, the acoustic 
back cracking soul of Palm Olive, the stunning Donny Hathaway flip on practice, the more lush guitar accented backdrop of Cataracts, and the soulful bass cushion of Goddamn. Freddie Gibbs, he might not be a great singer to croon through some of these songs, but he does have a knack for a strong tune and a hook that does help him on a lot of these songs. And that's kind of the frustrating thing about this project, because it is great. And I'm critical because I've got high standards and high expectations for Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib. They've earned that pedigree even beyond Pinata. The flows, a lot of the wordplay is top notch. The guest stars they deliver. The soulful vibe is textured and potent when it's not getting more experimental and they stick the landing more often than not. I find more cleverness with every listen I give when I unpack this project. But I'm left with an odd feeling that Freddie Gibbs has less control here. The path forward feels murkier and that this album seems to have less direction, feels more scattered even through its layers. In a strange way, I'm kind of reminded of similar religious subtext of the systemic damnation the black man must face and overcome that was all over Kendrick Lamar's damn. But where Kendrick was acutely aware of his position as a leader increasingly feeling the weight of his presence, Freddie Gibbs is more of the street-level everyman who wants to bear the weight, ascend that mountain, but only sees the pitfalls in his journey, not the path forward. I don't know. It seems like the focus has shifted inwards to outwards on this project. And if it didn't come from a more fractured project with songs that feel so fragmented at points, I'd probably be inclined to put this among the best 2019. But I'm not sure it gets all the way there. Or has the killer standouts that I loved, like Deeper or Shame from Pinata. As such, I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. Absolutely a recommendation. This is great hip-hop in the underground that is in entirely up my alley, but if it also comes around year endless and this is faded on me a bit, just don't be that surprised. In the meantime though, really I'm just curious what path Freddy Gibbs will take. Be it with Madlib or without, he kind of sealed off that door, or at least put a definitive closure coming off of Pinata and all us wanting more if we got it. But where he'll go next? Hell. Anybody's guess. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I'm not sure how this is going to be received. I imagine people are going to get very annoyed that I just didn't praise this or call it one of the best of the year because I'm not sure I'm there yet. And again, I've given this tons and tons of listens and it is still on the cusp, but it's great, but not sure it's in that higher tier. But hey, if you actually want to buy or stream it, highly recommend you do. Link's down in the description below. And I got the poll up there for y'all to tell me how possibly wrong I am. Although, I think some of the reception has been a little bit muted. I think some people are realizing it's not better than Pinata, so we'll see where that happens. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. You want to follow me on social media, links to all that is down in the description below. And hey, if you guys are looking for the last episode of Billboard Breakdown is that dropped yesterday, it is on the new channel as I've constantly brought up. Links over here in the card right there. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.